Now I'd like to demonstrate some properties of the FFT, also known as the Fast Fourier Transform. In this demonstration I have a time domain waveform and I'm displaying the FFT magnitude down here. I can control the amplitude and the frequency of up to two sinusoids. Let's get this amplitude up to one and let me dial up a little bit higher frequency. Now as you look down here in the spectrum we see a spectral component associated with that frequency. Here's a lower frequency, we see it sliding to the left. Higher frequency, we see it sliding to the right. Let's bring that back down all the way to DC. Notice that the value is 100, which happens to match exactly the value of the FFT length. Now that I'm setting N up to 200 and then to 300, we see that value showing up. Now, if we divide the time domain values by n prior to going into the FFT, this normalizes the results. We never have to worry about that amplitude changing as a function of n. So let me get the auto scale turned off here one more time. Now we see a value of 0.5 over here and then a 0.5 over there. And really think of it as that DC value that was at one has now been split into two parts. Notice the spectral lines traveling in opposing directions. One of these increases towards the right as I increase the frequency. And right about here at 50, they are meeting right there in the middle. This is the maximum frequency that you can have in the time domain. Let's look at this a little more cl closely alternating samples between minus one and plus one, and that occurs exactly at 50 hertz, which is the mid midpoint of the FFT spectrum array. Now an interesting thing happens here, if you look, we cannot visually distinguish frequencies 49 and 51. We might be able to keep track of those two spectral components based on following them through the midpoint, but other than that, they would be indistinguishable. So we can think about this as being the frequency of interest, but really the, the frequency is now this, what's called an aliased component. So as I increase the frequency, we see the alias going to a lower and, and lower frequency. Note that this is completely indistinguishable from the case of using only two Hertz for the sinusoid. This aliasing phenomenon is, is an interesting property of discrete time signals. Next, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that I have two whole periods of the signal at the moment. I'm gonna change the properties so that way I can step this value by 0.1 instead of by one. Let's start running the or running the VI again. All right, here I have a fractional value and notice that we now have a number of additional lines showing up in the spectrum. And concentrate your attention down there on the FFT magnitude. Now that I'm back to a whole number of periods, there's one, two, and then three. Now we are back to a nice discrete single line. But the moment that I start having fractional uh, period, then we start to see these adjacent lines showing up. Now I'd like to draw your attention especially to that magnitude area there. If you look carefully, as you increase the frequency, you can see how the, the line appears to split amongst adjacent bins, and then it also is spread out over a larger range as well. This phenomenon is called spectral leakage, by the way. Now, so far we've always seen that everything in the upper half of the array is a mirror image of everything in the lower half. So it's common to display only the lower half of the array. All right, another thing I'd like to draw your attention to is Again, this idea that as we increase slightly, 
that frequency, we start to see that that spectral line divides uh, more or less between two bins. But then it also has contributions at many adjacent bins as well. Now let me bring in the second sinusoid. Get a non-zero frequency there. All right, that was the lower frequency showing up. We'll set that to a value of nine. This one is at 13. So at the moment, we can very clearly distinguish these two frequencies from each other. The problem with spectral leakage has to do with if the only thing you can see is the magnitude spectrum, then it might not be so obvious what are the frequencies of interest here. They tend to get obscured because of that leakage. One way we can get a little bit of help for this problem is to increase the number of samples in the array. So now I'm at n equals 300. This is n equals 400. As I continue to increase the value of n, we start to see that we have more dense sampling of the time waveform, and we start to be able to resolve these spectral lines more clearly. And in fact, at this value of 1000, suddenly we can resolve both of those lines very clearly. So this is a general property of the FFT. If you need more frequency resolution, then you need to have a higher value of n. I should also point out that for maximum computational efficiency, we want n to be a power of 2. And that often means that we don't have the nice round numbers that I've been showing so far. So we'd have numbers like 512, 256, and so forth. And now spectral leakage, again, starts to show up. One way can, we can try to deal with spectral leakage in practice is to cause the endpoints of the array to taper down to zero at both sides. So I do this by multiplying by a window shape. With this taper absent, then the discontinuity that we have at the edges can cause spectral leakage. But with the window in place, notice that we have reduced spectral leakage.